Hello and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel. If you're returning, thank you so much for being here as always. I love you guys. Today is Christmas in July and I love plaid hosted by my good friend, Indy Annie Jones. But let's go ahead and get right on into it. DIY number one. For this project, I have a Mary cutout from the Dollar Tree, a piece, piece of scrapbook paper, and my crimson red chalk paint that is a Waverly product, which is also a plaid product. I don't know if you know that Waverly and Home Decor, those are all plaid products. So I had taken the hanger off of the back of my Mary sign, and now I'm just using some fine grit um, sandpaper to smooth out all of the rough edges. There weren't too many of them, but I just want to make sure it was cleaned up using my little, um, little vacuum, my, what is that ladybug <laughs> vacuum to clean that up. And now I am going to trace not all of this, but some of the letters onto the back of my scrapbook page. And I'm just using a pencil and I'm going to trace around the M and just get that to the best of my ability. And so obviously these letters are kind of attached to each other. So I'm going to have to um, kind of punt on that. But I did the M and now I'm going to do the R. And then you can see where it kind of flows into the other letters. I'm just going to have to kind of figure out how I want the ends of these letters to look. So that's what I'm doing now. Just kind of filling in where the letters should end versus where the letter next to it might begin. So once I had that done, then I've got the reindeer head. It didn't occur to me when I turned it sideways like that, that it would impact the pattern. I don't know why I wasn't thinking about it, but it turned out super cute anyway. But if you want to have your pattern all going the same direction, if you're particular like that, you'll want to make sure that you don't turn it like I just did. So at any rate, I am coming back with this one because this also kind of melded into one of the letters and I'm just trying to mirror what's on the other side of this little deer head with the antlers and everything and just trying to get it to look symmetrical. So good thing about pencil, you can erase it and fix it. <laughs> All right, so I did not cut that out just yet. I went ahead and set it aside because I figured I could paint this and then I could do the cutting out while this was drying. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I traced the letters first because once I paint it, I don't want to be trying to mess with tracing out the letters, right? So just making sure I'm getting in all the little nooks and crannies. I used a larger brush first, and then I did come in with a smaller brush to get all of the little nooks and crannies that I was having trouble getting with the larger brush. So while that was drying, I did go ahead and just really carefully cut out the two letters and the little um, deer head. And this is all dry now, so I am just making sure that it's gonna line up. I'm not securing it at this point. I'm just kind of placing it down. And I was really happy with um, how well it matched up with what I had, uh, you know, cut. So now I don't know why I didn't use Mod Podge because Mod Podge is also a plaid product. And since this is an I love plaid video, you would think that I would have thought to use the Mod Podge. I didn't. I might go back and use Mod Podge on it like later um, because I just used the glue stick. And for me, I don't know if this has been your experience, but sometimes for me, glue sticks end up peeling up. And here goes my clock in the background. Sorry for the little tune you're going to get on top of everything else, but um, just going to go ahead and secure all of this down with my glue stick. Again, I should have used the Mod Podge. It would have been a much more permanent hold, a much more secure hold. And yeah, I just had a brain hiccup. Not really sure why I decided to use the, um, the glue stick. So, but as you can see, I'm doing every other letter with the um, buffalo check print and you could use any kind of print for this if you're not a fan of buffalo check you don't have to use buffalo check if you have something that's got little snowmen on it and you want to put that on there you know or santa clauses or whatever this is really just for inspiration so now i'm going to go ahead and secure down the little deer head 
and I was feeling like it needed something more. And so I decided I was going to give him like, a, well, I'm pressing this down with my fist apparently first, but I decided I was going to give him a little nose. So once I was done with that, I grabbed a little berry from one of my berry picks and just applied that with some hot glue. It's kind of small, so hard to see here, but I thought it was cute. I guess I could have used a bigger one, but at any rate. Now I slowed this down because I did bring this out with my little pip berry stuff and then I did feel like it still needed something more but it wasn't until I started actually editing this video that I was like you know what I'm gonna go back and put the pip berry on there but I had an idea to actually color the pip berries and make them look like little Christmas lights. So here is me with the pit berries again and I'm just coloring them with a purple I have like a pink I have a green it didn't occur to me to use red I don't know why I used pink instead of red but that's I don't know that's what I used so I had um, a green a yellow a blue a pink and a purple and once I had those all colored I'm just gonna wrap my little pit berry garland around the um, antlers of my deer I don't know I just thought that this would be a little bit more fun and whimsical and give it a little more interest and so there she is let me know what you think All right, as I mentioned earlier, this is the I Love Plaid video. There is a gift away. All of the rules for the gift away are right here. There is a fantastic group of crafters. This is hosted by my friend Annie at Indiana Jones. The link for the playlist is in my description box. I hope you'll give everyone some love. DIY number two. All right, I have a canvas. This came in a pack of six from Michaels. I believe it worked out to be about $2 per canvas. This is a 10 by 20. Now I grabbed my Arteza Thalo Blue paint because I wanted a really nice, dark, um, deep blue shade. I almost used my um, chalk paint in the color Ocean. And again, that would have been a plaid product, but <laughs> we're using Arteza because I wanted this shade so um, it wasn't super consistent the way that I put it down I could have gone back over it but I decided I wanted it like that because I just thought it would be more interesting than just a solid blue co color but while that was drying on my Cricut Explorer I cut out this sheet of um, silver vinyl and now I'm just going to go ahead and um weed it <laughs> searching for my words today you guys but um yeah so i'm just gonna go ahead and weed it and i'm being super careful because some of the little pieces are a little bit more fine and they wanted to come up with the rest of the vinyl as i was peeling this away so i'm just taking my time and just working my way through i did because this was such a large piece of vinyl um, I did go ahead and cut off some of the excess vinyl after I started pulling it away just to make it a little bit easier to work with. So if you're ever working with larger sheets, you know, it, there's no reason why you can't cut the vinyl away, right? So then I was using my weeding tool also to help keep the finer little lines down on the backing because I did not want those coming up with the piece that I was weeding away. So just continued to work on the piece, getting it all taken care of, and uh, just going to weed out all of those little smaller pieces. So obviously you can see what th this is about, and um, so you've probably got an idea of what we're going to be doing with it. Once I've got it all weeded out, I'm going to go ahead and grab my uh, transfer tape. This is an Arteza transfer tape, but I have different brands. I've got like a duck brand. I've got Cricut brand. I've got the Arteza. I really tend to just grab whatever is um, close at hand <laughs> in my stash. So um, 
I think they all three work just fine. Here I'm just trying to get this nice and lined up with no bubbles or anything. So it took me a minute to, to get my act together here. But as long as you don't start pressing it down and burnishing it, I, I find I can pull it back up again without pulling off that vinyl. Um, so once I had it the way that I wanted it and making sure that everything was laying relatively flat, I was able to, to burnish it. And now I'm peeling away the backing using my little scraper tool, my burnishing tool to help me make sure that none of the pieces come up off of the transfer vinyl. Cause I don't want them to, to stick to my backing. All right. Now this is all dry. And I'm going to line up my little nativity scene with the very bottom of my canvas and lay this all out. I'm going to burnish this, keeping in mind that this is a canvas, so it does have some give to it. So I can't, you know, really press down all that hard. And I know that I'm going to have to kind of be careful with it when I start pulling away the transfer tape. It ended up um, not being as difficult as it could have been. There have been instances where I have tried to um, put down stencil vinyl on a canvas, um, usually before I've painted it. And I think maybe that also helped out a little bit here that I had paint on the surface, but sometimes the vinyl can be really challenging to apply to um, a canvas. So this is a project that you certainly could do on a piece of wood. It does not have to be a canvas. You could apply it to foam core board if that's what you have. You could use cardboard and dress it up and paint it and make it look pretty, right? So it doesn't have to be the canvas like what I'm using here. That's just what I happen to use. And so peeling all this away just really carefully. My initial intention with this piece was to add Christmas lights. I was going to use clear lights and poke little holes around or through the star, that large star. And I was going to push the, the lights through it and have it light up. I ultimately decided not to do that. Um, and here I was, like, I was literally reaching out to Rich and sending him pictures and asking him his thoughts <laughs> because he wasn't home when I was doing this and ultimately decided to leave it. But let me know what you would have done. <laughs> DIY number three. All right, I have a foam cone, styrofoam cone, and my Kirkland's ribbon from Costco. If you have followed me for a while, you know I love the Costco ribbon. This is a spool of 50 yards, and I got it for $7, and the quality is wonderful. I love, love, love their ribbon, and I don't think I have ever found a better deal. Um, and if you have um, a Sam's Club or a BJ's, I understand that all of the wholesale clubs tend to carry their versions of, of ribbon. And my guess is that they're gonna be out in the next couple of months. I, if I seem to recall that um, they start selling their ribbon relatively early. So you might wanna be on the lookout for it if you are looking for some really nice quality wired ribbon for crafts or for gift giving, right? So I'm trying to figure out how I want to apply this here. I had been inspired by something that I saw online that actually used pieces of sweater, just strips of sweater um, fabric for lack of, you know, knit, whatever. But, um, and it was just applied in loops. And I thought, you know what, I could probably do that with ribbon and make it look like a really cute little tree. So I'm just looping it back and forth at a little bit of an angle, making sure that the white is completely hidden when I'm doing this and just kind of bending it back, applying my hot glue and working my way all the way around the base of the styrofoam form. And once I get to the end there, I'm gonna, again, just make sure everything is, is covered up. I'm gonna figure out my angle and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut off that, that ribbon there. I thought about continuing on with the same strand but I wasn't sure that it was going to look right with moving to the next level. So I opted to cut it and then I'm just going to go ahead and start with the next row. Um, you know, doing the same exact thing, alternating it a little bit so that my loops fall between the loops that are down below. 
on the first row. Hopefully I'm making sense. I don't know. I feel like I'm a little brain dead at the moment. Um, but I'm going to do the exact same thing again. And these loops, I would say, are probably two to three inches. I'm going to say two and a half inches long. That would be my, my guess. I did not measure them. Um, I'm very big on doing what looks pretty to your eye. So I don't know. I just think of crafting as a very creative thing and you can certainly make it however you would like it to be created, right? So again, this is for inspiration. And if you can think of a better way to do it, I would love to know your ideas because um, it's so often that um, my subscribers will share with me their ideas on how they would do a project. And um, I learn as much from you guys probably as you might think that you learn from me when I do these things. So really appreciate all of your comments and suggestions. So I worked my way all the way up and around. And as we got towards the top, you know, understandably there were fewer loops because, you know, it became more and more narrow at the top. And once I had that all completely covered, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up over the top to hide the, the white. I guess maybe I have one more loop to create here. Um, but again, just trying to make sure that everything is covered, that there's no white showing. And I was so pleased with how, with how this little tree was turning out. I, I don't know what I expected, but I think it exceeded my expectations. So I was really happy with it. So here I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it over the top. I'm gonna trim that off once I have an idea of how much ribbon I need there. I'm gonna fold over the, or fold under, I should say, the raw edge, tucking that all in and around. And then I'm gonna grab my hot glue. I'm gonna put some hot glue all the way around that, you know, I don't want it to be gobs and gobs, but I wanna make sure that each area of that edge is covered so that I don't end up with white showing. So once that's done, gonna let that cool for a second. And then I grabbed a little star. Now, this red star actually is out of my 4th of July stash, but um, I thought it would be fun to have a red star. You could certainly do a white star. I'm actually going to be doing that on another project in a little bit. But I wanted a red star for this with my little green tree. And I cut down a skewer that I'm going to use to attach it here. And I have my pokey tool from the, the Dollar Tree that I was sticking into the top of the tree to create a hole. Now, this is my Crimson Chalk Paint Again plaid product, and I wanted to paint that skewer to kind of camouflage it. I'm tucking it down inside the hole that I created, and then I am also going to poke, use my pokey tool on the star, make sure that it's um, got a place for that other end of that skewer to insert into, and just tucking it right down. I love this and I hope you do too. Let me know what you think of this one. I guess I have to fluff up the little um, things first. <laughs> And now it's time for a shout out timeout. Beautiful, Jamie. All these trays are so sweet. And I love the little card holder too. And great, Jamie S. I love these. They are so sweet, especially that um, toolkit. Awesome, Allison. All these beautiful wreaths. And super, Kathy. You know what? Pumpkins and snowmen, they are my thing. Sweet Iona, love these little houses and trees and gingerbread. I would love to give you a shout out too. If you have interest, just send me an email at craftedbycory at gmail.com. DIY number four. All right, now one of my subscribers saw a Dollar Tree haul that I had done recently and she mentioned to me, that she had picked up one of these tags and thought about putting a sheet of cork over top of that design. And she asked if I might try and create something with this so it would help maybe to inspire her on what she might do with hers. I love the idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cover this up with another sheet of cork. This is also from the Dollar Tree. I think they come 
and a pack of actually I think it's just a pack of one <laughs> I can't remember but anyway the Dollar Tree sheets um, of cork yeah they are adhesive self adhesive so I'm just trimming this off um, to try to get it to match up with the size of the um, tag yeah that using my pencil to mark off where the angles are and now you'll notice that it doesn't quite go all the way up to the top but that's okay because I'm gonna be covering that up a little bit later with something else so you won't even know that the cork is missing when we're done so I'm gonna go ahead and cut off those angles as I had marked them just using my straight edge to line up those little markings and then I'm going to go ahead and apply this to the cork, just making sure that I've got it all cut properly first. Peeling away that white backing and then just really carefully lining it up and applying it, laying it down. It's super sticky, so you want to make sure that you get it lined up before you start laying it down. And I'm using my little X-Acto knife and cutting out the little hole so that that is clear and the way that it's supposed to be. And then we're going to go ahead and um, once I've got that cleaned up, we're going to go ahead and decorate this a little bit. So got that all nice and set. Clean up my little table here. Okay, so this is a garland that I had picked up at Michael's. Um, I got it when I was getting some grab boxes. It was 50% off because it was off season. And I am just trying to remove some of the picks that I want to use. That first one was just in the way. So I took it off and now I took off a couple of the, the greenery pieces as well as um, some berry picks that were in there. Twisting together the evergreen pieces. And so you can see how we're going to be covering up that area that um, was not you know, covered again with the, the extra cork. So it'll be completely camouflaged. So lining all of this up and trying to place it the way I want it. I decided that those berry picks were just way too big. So I'm going to use just little sections of these. So one little section for each side. And I decided that, that was going to be more than sufficient for this piece. So just going to kind of figure out which one I want clip it away and then tuck it in so if uh, if you followed me for any time you know again that I'm very visual so I like to set things down where I think I want them before I commit <laughs> so I'm just getting everything the way that I think I want it and now I'm gonna come back in with the hot glue so I'm gonna put down a pretty generous amount of glue and tuck my picks into that I got a little too close there burn my finger but um, then I went ahead and added a little bit more glue, the next thing of picks, and now I'm just double checking on where I want these berries. I'm going to glue them down in there as well. Did the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab out some more of my Kirkland ribbon. I love this ribbon. I think this is so pretty, this like multicolored buffalo check and just going to do a quick bow i am wrapping it around on itself so that i have three loops on either side and then i'll just go ahead and cut that off i'll cut another little strip to use as the tie in the middle i started to put it away and i was like wait a minute i need that <laughs> um, i did not clip the um the edges on this one i just left it and um and i'm just tying it like like that so and that'll give me an opportunity to adjust the, um, the the loops if I need to. Like if I need to pull it through a little bit more or less on either side, I have that ability. But I'm just pulling them all apart and getting them all fluffed up. And we've got a perfect little bow here. Taking those short ends that were part of the looping when we were just first started that bow and trimming those down i'm dovetailing those just so that um, they won't fray and if anybody sees those ends which are actually tucked up inside the loops themselves that they'll just look pretty and then i'm going to go ahead and get that set to attach some hot glue on the back of that bow and just making sure that it's nice and secure and going to hold that down for a second until the glue starts to cool and um 
there we go and now I just have these fun push pins that I can stick in here and this can be used to hold Christmas cards or notes or grocery lists or whatever your heart desires but it's just a fun little thing for the holidays let me know what you think DIY number five. All right, I have another styrofoam cone and a whole bunch of little ornaments. These are mostly from the Dollar Tree. Some of them I think I had gotten at the Hobby Lobby a while back. They've been in my stash for quite some time. And uh, this is, again, something that I was inspired by online. <clears throat> I'm, at first I'm trying to see if I could just stick the little nubby thing into the foam that wasn't working out so I grabbed my wire cutters and I'm just clipping off the little nub right and using some hot glue I'm going to apply it to my stone my foam cone styrofoam cone yes that um, but uh, you want to if you're going to be doing this and if you have any intention of clipping off that little nub you want to make sure you're using plastic ornaments this will not that will not work with with glass ornaments because if you try to cut the glass it's going to just shatter on you more than likely so just be aware of that I did have some glass ornaments in this stash and as I found them I just kind of set them aside and I did not use them but I'm starting out with my larger ornaments and these are all pretty small I think these are only just maybe an inch across and my intention was to use large ones all the way around but of course they didn't quite line up properly so I'm now trying to figure out if I can get a small one in there with it and it was just not not working so I've got two small little ornaments I should have not committed I should have laid them all out and seen what I wanted to do <laughs> and then I would have been able to put one of the little ornaments on either side rather than right next to each other but that's just my you know uh, my tendency so it all worked out well in the end anyway but um, so I'm just gonna work my way around I'm alternating colors I'm mixing them all up and you could certainly do a pattern of colors and then kind of make it look like it's in some sort of a pattern going up the tree but I opted to just do a complete mix of um, of the colors and then ultimately it was a mix of the sizes too so I could cover up my styrofoam as best as I could so I'm using the larger bulbs, bulbs, the larger balls um, for the most part, and then tucking in the smaller ones where needed. And when I got to the top, I did one little um, smaller one at the top for my little point. And now I thought for filling in all of those little holes, because I did have some gaps, I pulled out these jingle bells that I have in different sizes, thanks to my sweet subscriber, Rose. And I thought, oh, I'll put some of these jingle bells in here. Yeah, that wasn't working because they kept falling in too far for me to grab because they were much smaller than the ornaments, whatever else. So I'm like, you know what? Let me grab my moss. So I grabbed my reindeer moss instead. This is also from the Dollar Tree. And I said, you know, I'm going to try tucking some of this in between all of the little gaps. And I wasn't sure how it was going to work out at first, but you know what? I love the way it looks and it really does look like I've got all these bulbs on a little evergreen tree in the end you'll have to see what you think but I just thought it was so fun and I was able to just tuck the the moss right in between just applied a whole bunch of hot glue in the spaces tucked in the moss and I've got a little skewer well dowel it's that was the dowel there on my table um, just use that little dowel to help tuck it in in some of the tighter spots so there you go you can see me just using that to tuck it in and I just did that all the way around the tree until all of the little holes were covered. Now the inspiration that I um, got, oh, and here's my little white star, so I'm gonna attach that too. But it was from different shaped ornaments. So you can do this with all different kinds of ornaments. They don't have to be round ones. Just use your imagination, but let me know what you think.
Okay, everybody, that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give me a big thumbs up. Leave me a message. Let me know which one you liked the most. And remember that there is a whole playlist full of inspiration. There is a link in my description box. I hope you'll give everybody a lot of love. And don't forget about the gift away. All of those instructions are in that little clip in the video. And until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.